Michelle Cummins and uh, find out what's going on in the real estate world. It's the Cummins Real Estate Group Show. My name is Curtis Pope. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Curtis, and good morning, everyone. Now, I hear it's a bit of a different morning for you because uh, you're up at uh, Sasquatch Resort. Yes, we got possession and been up here just a couple nights, and it's amazing up here. It is so relaxing, and the trees and the just the feel there's still snow on the ground uh but yeah we're so excited we purchased a property for vacation and air short-term rental and it's three levels two stories in a basement full walkout basement and it's uh it's a not a log but it's it's the flat log it's very east coast style uh cabin it's so neat so we're going to do some renovations uh that is just going to add such beautiful flair to it but yeah i'm so excited that that is very cool, and I and I do love the fact that you know your vacation home is like fifteen minutes from your home home. Practically, by the the way I drive up the mountain. <laughs> well, maybe not so in the winter, but at least right now you're making good time. Yeah. Oh, it's so it's so great. But I'll be headed uh, back back after our radio show here this morning. Very nice. Now, do you have your uh, your your perfect uh, you know? outfit for uh, hitting the uh, chalet in the middle of winter have you got the perfect ski outfit not yet but that is definitely on my radar i have thinking about it i think i want a real hot pink suit with white fur around the collar and around the the wrist and white gloves and white boots because i want people see me coming down the mountain that's very very aspen like (laughs) yes very like 80s hot pink you know oh you want to go full like neon almost almost neon yes well, if you're going to go full to 80s, it. why not? I remember I had a pair of Andre Agassi tennis shoes. I didn't even play tennis, but they were neon pink and black. <laughs> you could see me walking from a mile away. Glow in the dark style. Yeah, that was, I think, 1990. Oh, oh yeah, the 90s. You're right. That was when I wore all that kind of stuff, too. Oh, it, Well, they kind of went from the 80s into the early 90s. Then grunge hit, and we all wore flannel. Yeah, you're right. But when I was 13 at the ice rink, I remember the sweater. I still today what I was wearing, the hot pink, hot orange striped sweater. Yeah, I was really classy there. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, all that stuff has come back, Michelle. I know, come back around. Oh, but, okay, so on our show today, uh, we just got released a couple days ago, the Fraser Valley Real Estate Stats. It is our stat show, the first show of the month. Yes, it is the first show of June 2022. And we will do that on our second segment because we are going to first talk about how the Bank of Canada just raised their interest rates again. We knew it was coming in June, and now there is the release. It, is, it has happened. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about also uh, Canada house uh, prices. How, how far could they fall? Where, what are we all talking about in the industry today? What's the talk of the town kind of thing? And uh, so we're going to talk about that first. So first, I wanted to uh, actually... Um, read out an article from the Canadian Real Estate Wealth magazine. It's one that I subscribe to, and it's a great article about Bank of Canada raises interest rates to 1.5% and what it means for your mortgage. So at the start of the year, amidst rising real estate prices and ballooning inflation, a hike of the Bank of Canada's key interest rate seemed like an inevitable now, nearly six months down the line, and with multiple hikes behind us, hikes seem like a regular occurrence. It really does. Today, the central bank has made it clear they intend to remain on course and continue to increase its rates even further. This week, the Bank of Canada announced an increase to their policy interest rate of 50 basis points. Now, I should say, this article just came out this yesterday morning, so... Um, the um, the total amounting so far for the year is 1.50 because they did a quarter percent. This is a this is 50 basis points now. Uh, that means interest rates are now six times higher than they were at the start of the year, though they still remain below pre-pandemic levels. So definitely got to keep that in context. The bank has also announced they plan to continue quantitative tightening the QT, a program under which the bank will allow the many bond holdings accumulate during quantitative easing to mature without replacing them, which will drive bond prices down and put upward pressure on bond yields. 
the policy interest rate affects the price of borrowing in many different areas of the Canadian economy. The current hikes are primarily a tool to help curb inflation, which hit 6.8% in the month of May. Most importantly for our readers, the, for their readers, the interest rate plays a big role in how mortgage rates are set. So uh, what happens when the bank raises its rates? you well the bank of canada notably does not take on regular canadians as clients instead they're mostly involved in influencing the major banks and directing monetary policy this means the first effect of the bank raising its policy rate will be an increase in the cost of borrowing for banks and financial institutions canadians can expect the cost of borrowing from banks and financial institutions to rise in a couple of days if it hasn't happened already this increased cost will be passed on to consumers in the form of an increased prime rate. The prime rate serves as the foundation for many consumer interest rates, including some mortgages. So how does it affect your mortgage? Well, the Bank of Canada policy rate plays a major role in how banks determine their variable interest rates. Fixed rates, on the other hand, are are more closely tied to government bond yields, which will be affected by the ongoing QT program. So the good news is that if you have a fixed rate, your interest rate won't change until your mortgage is up for renewal at the end of the term or if you decide to refinance. Depending on when you started your mortgage term and when you were up for renewal, an increased interest rate will affect you differently. Those who began or renewed mortgages amid the record low rates of the last two years will see the biggest increase in interest when it comes time to renew while mortgage terms that started prior to 2020 may not see as large of a change for variable rate mortgages, though your interest rates will be rising shortly if they haven't already and will continue to follow the policy interest rates as it moves upwards. While variable rates were very popular during our previous low rate environment, these borrowers will quickly feel the burn of rising interest rates. Many may choose to convert to a more stable fixed rate to ride out the shifting market. So I talked with a mortgage provider just a couple days ago and asked, So are you seeing people now going into more terms because of the rate hikes, or do you still see uh, most people going into variable rates still? And she said that she's still seeing the trend of going into variable rates, and she still sees that that, that long-term and short-term, that's still better than the current uh, five-term and and seven-term and ten-year rate, just the term rates. So... That is uh, the information about that. And then they go on to say, how much further will they go, though? No one but the Bank of Canada themselves can definitely say just how far rising interest rates will need to go, uh, though analysts are predicting more still to come. And again, the mortgage broker I spoke to says that if the inflation doesn't go out of hand, continuing on, going out of hand, uh, then then they shouldn't raise it again this year. But if inflation continues to be an issue and a problem, they will have no choice but to raise interest rates again. So despite the recent hikes, the rate of inflation has continued to go up in recent months and is predicted to continue to rise even further before it falls, is what the article says. Clearly, the bank must still do more if they hope to rein in inflation. Yet, even with the rapid increases we have seen, they must still try to avoid moving too fast. Our current interest rate is still below pre-pandemic levels, though it is higher than it was for much of the 2010s when inflation hovered around 2%. And looking even further back, we're still far from the highest interest rates ever seen in Canada. Uh, You know, though comparing with the past, it is not apples to apples. So looking forward to the rest of the year, many economists are predicting yet another 50 basis point increase in July now. So that's that's pretty big. And while RBC economics uh, forecasts a policy rate of 2.5% to end of the year. So with uh, just four potential hikes remaining on the BOC's 2022 schedule, they will need to continue at a pace of at least 25 basis points per increase to hit that forecast. Based on their recent clip, that seems more than doable. So that is what's happening with interest rates currently and uh, the perceivable future. And so overnight rates versus prime rates. Uh, that is another explanation that we can go in a little bit. But if you want more information of that, I do have good uh, connections to great mortgage providers. I'm happy to give you their name and you can ask them all the questions as I always do. And I do get rate cards every 
time there's a difference in rate hikes and, and any discounts that some of my mortgage providers offer. And I do share some of that on my social media if you want to keep an eye on that. Uh, and I'm happy to share with those with everyone as well. But, you know, if you wonder who, what is the Bank of Canada, well, the key to understanding how interest rates function in the Canadian financial system all comes down to the Bank of Canada and the Bank of Canada, not to be confused with the Royal Bank of Canada or the National Bank of Canada, which are completely separate entities. It's a government operated bank that serves as the Central Bank of Canada. And the Bank of Canada has been the nation's official central bank since its creation in 1934. And its stated goal is to promote the economic and financial welfare of Canada. So that is what the BOC is, the Bank of Canada. Very cool. Now we have the full explanation. Yes. Well, mostly. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, I guess we're getting to the point where we probably should take a break here. But if people want more information about what you do as a realtor and all the stuff that comes with it, because I know your website's chock full of stuff, where can they go? MichelleSimmons.ca. All right. We're back with more right after this. Segment number two of the Cummins Real Estate Group show with Michelle Cummins and myself, Curtis Pope. Now, Michelle, I know you're excited. I know you have a lot of stats to get to. So we should probably just dive right in because we don't want to run out of time when you have so many stats. I know how excited you get for the stat show. And hopefully I don't talk too fast so everyone can keep up with me. Well, how many coffees have you had today? Only two. (laughs) Only two. Yeah, Yeah, but how? when did you have those two? Like an hour ago or like just before we got on air? Pretty much just before we got on air. Okay, so we're going to do, you know, 12 minutes of stats in about three minutes is what you're saying. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. All right, well, let's get right to it. No need to drag it out any longer. Let's hear the stats. Okay, so Canada house prices, how far could they fall? Let's talk about that first, and then we'll get into the stats, because then you'll see. Uh, So sales and price growth have slowed in the housing market in recent weeks. And then we're going to talk about all of Canada and not just the Fraser Valley. So it's not a secret that Canada is currently in the throes of a housing market cool down. There's no surprise there. But with the pace of home sales falling in April and national house prices also on the way down. So new figures released by the Canadian Real Estate Association, we call it CREA, revealed that the country's home price index fell 0.6% between March and April, its first decline for over two years, as home resales also dropped by 12.6%. Unsurprisingly, CREA said that slowdown had been caused largely by recent interest rate hikes, with mortgage rates rising as the Bank of Canada and lenders across the country move away from the rock-bottom rate environment that's prevailed throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. That's not to say a crash is imminent. The actual national average home price has now declined for two months in a row after peaking in February. And that's the first half of February. According to CREA, the prices are still about 7% higher than last April. Meanwhile, the home price index is 23.8% up compared with the same time last year, although that represents a smaller yearly increase than the 29% it recorded in February. While the market isn't seeing the same number of transactions as last year, that's mainly because 2021 was an anomaly, according to Kitchener, Ontario-based principal broker Tracy Valco. So she's the founder of Valco Financial. Okay, so she told Canadian mortgage professional that the activity remained robust, with agents and brokers now having explanatory discussions with their clients and focusing on the educational aspect of what's happening in the current market. She says, I feel we're busy, but we're busier educating people and having more economic conversations. I think people understand inflation probably more than they ever have historically. So maybe that's a good thing, she said. I do think there's a bit of a shift for sure in terms of transactions. We're doing more second mortgages, more lines of credit. The current cool down is also presenting an opportunity for many home buyers. Valco said, 
with lower demand and fewer bidding wars, meaning a less stressful overall experience for those looking to buy. She says, I have to say, I find a lot of our clients are finding houses where before they weren't, of course. They were sitting because they weren't able to find a house. She goes, I wouldn't say there's more inventory on the market. I would say because there's not a huge demand, they've slowed down. Now, for us in the Fraser Valley, we know that in February, we had more listings hit the market than we've seen in the 80s. So, of course, this is Canada-wide, not just the Fraser Valley. Uh, so that's kind of what's happening with um, with that. So real estate, uh, you know, Royal LePage is, is a brokerage, the first brokerage ever in Canada, and the first brokerage I was with before I moved to uh, REMAX. Uh, but they also said aggregate home prices across the country would continue to rise, revealing in its full-year forecast that it expected that benchmark to increase by 15% this year and land at around 900000 by the end of 2022. That would include a 16.5% price hike in the greater Vancouver area to about $1.3 million. With the greater Vancouver area, the other of the country's two hottest markets, uh, projected to see its aggregate sale price rise to $1.44 million. That's an increase of 15%. So with that, I'm going to go into our uh, local stats. And that just came out a couple days ago, and it says, Home prices soften as Fraser Valley housing market cools amid lower sales and higher inventory. As property sales continue to fall in the Fraser Valley and active listings continue to grow, the region is edging towards more balanced levels not seen since the pre-pandemic period. If you see this graph, that's part of the statistics. And again, on my website, michellecummins.ca, scroll all the way down and you will see every month's stats I have there. So you can compare all the months to months and how it's gone down February to March, March to April, and now April to May. Uh, so have a look there. But the graph shows you that from a very high seller's market, it is now what we call in the blue zone, which is a balanced market. I should say it's just above a balanced market, literally just above it. So it's almost a balanced market again. Sales of all property types in May were uh, 1,360, down 16.9% from April 637, and down 53.9% compared to May of 2021. At the same time, active listings have more than tripled since December 2021. At the end of May, actives sat at uh, 5.4% higher year over year and an increase of 14.8% compared to April 2022. The sales to active listings ratio measures whether the market is balanced and uh, 12 to 20% or favors either buyers, which is less than 12%, or sellers that are greater than 20%. So in May, the ratio for Fraser Valley, all property types combined was 22%, comparable to pre-pandemic conditions in early 2020. So by comparison, during the pandemic, the ratio peaked at 92%, <laughs> indicating a very strong seller's market. So that's the difference. So since March... So this is this is actually quoted from uh, the current president of our real estate board. Since March, we've seen sales come down with an uh, uh, accompanying increase in inventory subsequently, uh, restoring much needed balance and cooling our heated market. So, so uh, that's Sandra Ben, uh, that president. And she further says, while still early, it suggests that as we gradually settle into a post-pandemic state of work and life, the big pandemic era drivers Working from home and record low interest rates may have run their course. Uh, so single family detached benchmark prices for the overall Fraser Valley is currently at a million seven hundred and twelve thousand five hundred, and that's a decrease of two point four percent compared to April and an increase of twenty six point two percent from uh, May of twenty twenty one. So year over year it's still up. Townhouses are at 918900 That's That's the benchmark price, and that's a decrease month over month from of 1.4%, uh, but it's still an increase 31.3% from last year. And apartments are at 581400 and that's a decrease month over month by 1.1%, uh, but an increase still of 30% compared to last year. So the sky isn't quite falling. Got to look at everything. And so now we're going to go into municipality by municipality. So Abbotsford's first detached benchmark prices are at one million four hundred twenty thousand two hundred dollars, an increase from last year, still of twenty three point seven percent, but a decrease of three point three percent. Townhouses are at seven hundred and fifty one thousand. That's an increase of last year, still of thirty six point six percent. And it actually townhouses went up 
month over month in Abbotsford for 1.3 percent. Apartments are 490,300, and that's an increase of 39.3 percent from last year, but it did go down 1.6 percent from the month before. Missions detached benchmark prices are at 1 million nine hundred. Sorry, $1,193,600, an increase of 24.3% from last year, but a decrease month over month by 5.9%, which is pretty big. Townhouses in Mission are at 762000 That actually went up month over month, just like it did in Abbotsford. It went up 1.6% month over month. And so that's a total from last year of 36.1%. Apartments actually went up two in, in Mission month over month by 3.1%, which is a total of 36.4% from last year, and that takes them to $488,700. Then White Rock and the South Surrey area benchmark prices for detached homes is at $2,133,400. That just went down slightly, which is 0.7% from last month, still an increase of 24.3% from the year before, and townhouses there are at a million thirty thousand seven hundred. That went down month over month two point one percent, but still at twenty seven point two percent from the year before. And apartments at six hundred and forty two thousand nine hundred. That went down only point nine percent from last month, but up still twenty three point six percent from the year before. Langley benchmark prices for detached is a million eight hundred thirty eight thousand nine hundred dollars. That went down one point eight percent from last month, and still twenty five point seven percent higher than last year. Townhouses are at $946,500. That actually went up, too, last month, uh, 1.2%. The over year is now 35.7%. And apartments in Langley are at 640500 That only went down month over month, 0.8%. So a total of 29.5% from last year. So Delta North, that area, benchmark detached prices are $1,589,200. That went down 3.1% from last month. A total increase now of 26.1% from last year. And townhouses are $1,024,200. That went down month over month 2.1%, but still up 30.2% from last year. And apartments at $640,500. It it decreased 1% from last month, but increased year over year 35.8%. Then we've got uh, City of Surrey, all combined. Detached benchmark prices. $1,849,400 $1,849,400 went down 2.1% from last month, but overall up 27.3% from last year. In townhouses, $942,500 down 2.9% from last year, but still overall up 28.7% from last year. And apartments at $581,800, that went down 1.2% from last year, but overall still 28.1% from last year. So with that, that is the Fraser Valley real estate statistics for you today. And I know we're kind of short on time, but so I want to to share uh, a quote. And for my new listings, please check out my website and check out my Facebook business page because I have them all up there. We do have a couple open houses this weekend. If you want to uh, go gallivanting around to open houses. And you could also check your Realtor.ca app and check hit the button open houses and in your map area and it will show you all the open houses that you can you can have a look at so our quote of the show this week is progress is impossible without change and that's from george bernard shaw that's one i actually knew i knew you you were so good at quotes well, there's you got you pull out some really good ones that I don't know, but that was one of the few ones I've known, and that is a great one. Awesome. Unless yeah. you're, you know, John Dutton, and you are the wall that stops progress, right? Right, right. Well, you know what, and you know, but selling and buying real estate, it's it's a huge change, and it's so hard for for a lot of people to make that decision and make that change. And I always tr- try to rem- remind people when. You know, there, there. It's always a positive reason why they make the change. It's a positive reason, and and just keep on thinking of that reason why why you're wanting to make the change because it it is it is good for us. Absolutely. All right. Well, if people want more information about what you do as a realtor, where can they go? They could always go to MichelleCummins.ca. And join us again next week when we will talk real estate in order to unlock your real estate potential on a show where real estate is maximized. Thanks for listening.